This is Akashvani. In the program Spotlight, we now bring you a discussion on India's first analog space mission. The participants are Dr. Subrat Sharma, Dean Research University of Ladakh, and Nasta Jhala, space architect, associated with the mission. Moderator is Lalima Aneja Dang, anchor. India has had a very successful space program with ISRO at its helm. And with Chandrayaan-3 and the successful Mangalyaan mission, it has indeed come up a few notches on the global map. We are now all set to have an analog space mission, which is in Leh in Ladakh. Dr. Subrat, let me start with you. We have often talked about and heard about a space mission. What is analog space mission for a common person? I mean, we think of analog as uh, something concerned with digital connotation. How would you explain an analog space mission or a setup? Analog missions basically are the precursor to uh, any actual mission. So these are the field testings of the hardware, biological material, humans, all sort of things in the locations where we have almost physical similarity to the our extreme space environment and we talk about when extreme space you understand that no oxygen very low temperature and sometimes very high temperature so all these things are stimulated in a real physical environment of the earth which are similar to the other planets so we mimic the situation on the earth to analyze our technologies, our human behaviors and any other material. Oh, just as we have a simulation for people who learn driving, this is for people who want to go into space. You have created a similar environment on the earth. Is that how we understand? And why Leh Ladakh? Astaji, would you like to throw light on this? So basically, when we are looking to have an analog experience mm. and want to put up an analog habitat, we want to look at an area which has a very much similarity to, to that of the space. So for example, Ladakh has a Mars-like looking environment, endless uh, terrain. First of all, the population is also very low. So where we have placed our analog habitat, we don't really have any people moving about. So that gives us a feeling of an isolation, basically, due to which we can study the psychological factors as well. Also, Ladakh has a very similar Mars-like soil. It has a presence of gerocyte basalt and mineral like elements of that of the mars so our soil te- geosampling soil testing plays a very crucial role in identifying if we can build a future habitat on mars using the in situ resource utilization even currently from nasa and other organizations are working on building habitat on the lunar base using 3d printing lunar regolith so we can explore those kind of elements and minerals also in the ladakh soil so it's the isolation it's the soil elements and also it has a very extreme temperature mm-hmm. which gives us a very much similarity to, to that of the space and then also isolation plays an important role also lack of oxygen so we have atmospheric challenges as well in the ladakh and then it is a little bit uh, also for planetary science so because Ladakh is very closer and it is at a high altitude. So we have to understand that traveling in space is, is one story, but having a habitat on a space object like moon is is a totally different ball game altogether. And that's where the analog space mission comes in. Are we to understand that? Because we are trying to create a habitat yes, yes. on the lunar so space. Analog, yes. So it is not lunar habitat is a second step. First is for the habitat in space. Now let's say, for example, when we talk about International Space Station, right? So International Space Station has habitat, basically an habitat uh, revolving around the Earth. So it has a habitat functions like EVA, then it has a galley, waste hygiene compartment, bio lab, chemistry lab, crew quarters, sleeping areas, recycling systems. All our analog is there. Try to create similar habitat features also in analog habitat so we can simulate the exact space conditions. So even in our analog habitat that we have designed and built up and placed in Ladakh also has a stimulating airlock, an EVA room, dry waste hygiene compartments, crew quarter, mini bio lab and chemistry lab. So we cannot really go to space and explore all the challenges because it's a very costly affair. So we have to make sure that whatever we are going to do in space is 100% success here on the earth. And for to create all the payloads and all the mission success here on the earth, we need to give the right environment to that experiment. And that can only happen through analogs. So, uh, Dr. Subrat, as Astaji just mentioned, being a space architect, she's talking about a whole setup of a habitat at an international space station if required. Where does the role of the University of Ladakh come in? Very good question. Actually, when we received this proposal from Aka Space Studio, we were also thrilled to participate in that. Mm-hmm. Right now, we have a state-of-art laboratory facilities at University of Ladakh. It is one of the best in the country as far as the soil, geological experience experimentation and their analysis is concerned. 
So this was a very big advantage to be part of this uh, experiment because when their rover and the other uh, astronauts in their suits, they will collect the soils and we will analyze it for their geochemical parameters. It will be related to the Mars analogy for the purpose which Ms. Asta already told that if we can make the things not carrying the material from Earth to the Moon or the Mars to build a space habitat mm -hmm. in different planets, so how we can use these geochemical properties that which are close to or similar to those planets. So in that way, the University of Ladakh is experimenting on those aspects. Further, there are also some biomedical parameters which are being uh, helped to understand the biology of uh, any astronaut or right now those who are residing in this uh, analog mission. So we are supporting on for this purpose. I see. That sounds great. Astaji, we've had Indians in space. We've had Rakesh Sharma in space. We've had uh, Sunita Williams still, uh, if I may say, stuck in space. And um, sorry to say that we lost Kalpana Chawla in that space shuttle Columbia. Does this venture of yours of having this analog system, does it give us an edge because we can now study the Indian's parameters on as far as biology is concerned, because we are definitely being a tropical country, our physical makeup would be different from the, the West, those in the Western nations who often sent their uh, space missions abroad because Indians are usually in tropical climate. So are you also researching on the so-called Indian human in space typically? I think the purpose of having this analog is basically to collect the Indian biometric data. Because as you can see that either it's Sunita Williams or Rakesh Sharma, they have all been flying to space through international space agencies. Right. Not from the Indian land yet or yes. in an Indian vehicle yet. And this will be the first time that uh, we will be sending astronauts from the Indian soil in an Indian vehicle completely manufactured in India. So this kind of study plays a very, very crucial role because it helps us to design the indoor environment of the space capsule. Let's say, for example, in future, we want to build this biocentric station, right? We have our uh, ISRO's plan is there. You can see that Indian anthropometry is completely different to that of the NASA astronauts. Our astronauts have a different anthropometry. So due to which we have a different human factors that play in the role and different ergonomics factor that play in the role. So we might have a different interior setup of Bharati Antrik station in the coming years. And it might not be so similar to that of an international space station, the China space station. So that is why it is so much important to study the Indian factor so that we can design, we can put up the right payload and we can put up the create an exact indoor environment so that our Indian astronauts in the future, Indian space tourists can perform very well in space. And of course, it has to be cost effective. And I think that is a trait and the quality and the uniqueness that India holds for making all the missions cost effectively. Even in the analogs, uh, we want this one and also in the coming one, the sustainability, recyclability is and the cost effectiveness is one of the crucial factors that we consider while we design any space analog habitat. So I think this is one major step towards being self-reliant or Atmanirbhar Bharat in space as well. And this is going to be an indigenous affair with focus on the Indian human in space. Uh, that sounds really nice. Dr. Subrat, if I may ask you, Astachi just mentioned that we are trying to, you know, space is a very difficult terrain. It's expensive. You can't come back easily. It's also a very lonely place to be in. I mean, from somebody from the earth may fancy being in space, but for somebody who has been in space for a long time, you need to have nerves of steel, if I may say. Is the university also pitching in for providing the mental tenacity for the Indian human to be there through psychologists or psychometric tests? Right now, the project design is that we are looking for the biological parameters of astronaut living for 21 days in isolation. You rightly said you require nerves for that. And especially when you are alone and in extreme conditions when temperature drops very high during just after sunset in Ladakh. So you can understand that daytime temperature and nighttime temperatures are very high and low and we don't have a sunlight inside that capsule. So your biological rhythm, your biological clock will certainly be affected by this. So all these parameters are being studied and especially that what Ms. Asta said that bio metrics of Indian population. That is much required right now than when we can screen a large portion of our human population, Indian population, which is fit for any kind of a space journey or any kind of a space experiments. 
so these are the two major things which yield results for their future our prospects in the space especially atmanirbhar right now we are in the right direction because mm-hmm. if analog machine you see those basically provides you that with all the experiments cannot be done in this space so we require that we require time money equipment manpower all sort of things but in analog machine we certainly we can have all these things to be tested here and if we require some fine tuning or counter measures so that can be done before sending to the space flight or certainly biometric and anthropometric data set is very important in this situation Absolutely. Asa ji, is this space station set up in uh, Leh, Ladakh uh, going to be temporary or permanent? Or in fact, the first time we are coming to know that there is something called space architect, which you are, which we, the way we define you. So is this going to be a temporary or a permanent set up? So I'll just like to emphasize, before we put up this one, we had two years back when I moved, made my move back to India. One of the reasons was because I had seen so many students going abroad to experience analogs. for example in us from the uta mars station or in europe also we have lunar station so we had a lot of indian population going abroad paying quite an amount of money to participate in that such so like why not uh, have this started in india so it's been 2 years i am personally very much involved into analogs and we have already designed our first analog habitat which we tested in 2021 in a white desert of india the white run of kutch because that also had a very much similarity to that of the space and lays a more of an extreme environment so this is our first pilot project and this is a temporary one for 21 days but on the basis of this we are working currently on how we can make more habitats and we can modularize along with this one and set up a permanent facility and i believe that many institutions will be also involved in establishing a permanent scientific base set up in leh ladakh i'd like to add to this that how this is a very short duration experiment 21 days but if you realize that globally the scientist very much interested to do studies in ladakh especially for this mars and abogi and there are many other institutions universities from abroad with the indian partners they are trying to mimic the things from the soil from the biology of that so ladakh is a very important place to do all kind of experimentation here so this aka space studio was the first to make a habitat for that the rest of the people are doing with the geology biology all sort of things so in that way if this comes as a permanent station it will be a very great facility for the indians to do research in a very comprehensive manner by bringing all the minds together from different disciplines asta ji how would this mission enhance our space capacity on the global map so one of the most scientific analogs that we have for many years is from nasa nasa hera nasa hestia nasa has 3d printed mars analog facility also which has just recently their analog astronaut finished one year without coming out of their habitat in complete isolation and then nasa also has a nemo which is an underwater analog habitat so nasa astronauts train there before they fly to space so there are many across the globe and now this is the first one in india and uh, hoping to have a permanent facility so definitely it will be contributing a lot to our own india's future space plans and i think isro is fourth strongest uh, space agency which having a history of historic missions so there is definitely a lot of interest from abroad especially from nasa and other organizations who have an uh, curiosity on what is the outcome of our analogs in india so i believe that in future in the next one year or next two to three years we will have an a lot of involvement from scientists from abroad as well to help us out absolutely space has been fascinating for everybody not just for scientists but for the ordinary citizen of the earth and we so far we had heard of rockets carrying satellites of other countries and uh, knowing that many other countries have shown interest in this mission well it gives us definitely an edge and uh, we are hoping and praying and uh, definitely it looks like that this is going to be another feather in isro's cap thank you very much uh, dr subrat and astha ji for talking to us thank you very much thank you You were listening to a discussion on India's first analog space mission. The participants were Dr. Subrat Sharma, Dean Research University of Ladakh and Nasta Jhala, space architect associated with the mission. Moderator was Lalima Aneja Dang, anchor. This program was produced and presented by the News Services Division of Akashvani. You can listen to it on our mobile app News on AIR. This program is also available on our YouTube channel News on AIR Official. 
You may share your feedback about the program through email at airnsdtalks at gmail.com 